As usual, in the working files for this particular session, they'll either be in a folder on your DVD or a folder in your downloaded files if you downloaded the course off the internet. Just be aware that I've renumbered the files for this particular section. So in this particular section, we have local two files and central two files, you'll notice, instead of central one and local one like we had in the previous section. So this particular file here is local2, which is the model local2, and we're user1. Now that local2 has come off of the central file, central2, so it kind of all sits together. But we're user1, we've got the general work set as our active work set there. Okay, so that's all set up in that particular session of Revit. Now if I go down here to the bottom and go to my other session of Revit here, we are in the general work set not editable because we're now local to, but we're user two. So we're the other user, but we're in a not editable work set that is owned by another user. Now what I want to do is work on this column here, but it's in a work set owned by another user. So what I need to do is get permission to edit that column. So if I click on that column there, you'll see I get this funny little symbol, which I mentioned in the previous video. So when I click on that, it says make element editable. Now at the moment it can't be until user one resaves the element to central and relinquishes it and I reload the latest work set. However, what I can do here, if I just drag this up a little bit, see this little button here, place request. Now I've placed a request to user one to continue working on this particular column. Now you'll notice here it's saying to continue working instead of waiting for the response, close this dialog, cancel your change in the error dialog box. Your editing request will still be active and you will receive a notification when it's granted or denied. So I can close that and that all goes. So I've placed a request now to user one to work on their work set. So in collaborate here, I'm asking to work in the general work set work set. So let's go back to the other session now here. Look, we get an editing request received from user two to work on that column. Now I've got a choice, I can show it, I can grant it, or I can deny it. I might be working on that particular part of that work set, so I might deny it at this particular point in time. Or I might grant it because I'm not working on that part of the work set. To show it is very easy, I just click on show, and it shows me in Revit the particular column that that particular user wants to work on. So in this particular case, I'm going to grant the request and say, yep, that's fine. You can go work on that and you'll notice it clears. Now, if I go back to the other session and come back in here now, my editing request has been granted by user one and I've been granted permission to edit these elements. I click on show. There's the element that I want to work on. Now you'll notice if I just zoom out slightly there and click that that uneditable element symbol has gone. So that's all done. So I can click there now, I can close that, it's finished. If I go back here to the other user, I can check my editing requests here. And I've got pending, there aren't any, or others, there aren't any. That's because I've cleared them by granting that request. So you can see how easy it is once you've got these work sets running, how you can give each other permission to work on each other's work sets, even though you have ownership of them. So you can apply those editing requests at any time. However, here's the kicker. If you're getting lots of editing requests popping up all the time on your screen from other users, it can drive you insane. What you do is you check your editing frequency. Now that is in your options. So if I click here and go to options now, and in general here, work sharing update frequency, less frequent, more frequent. I drag that along. And I can say I want manual updates only, such as borrowing elements or synchronizing. That's the less frequent lowest level. Take it up every 58 seconds and so on. I normally set it to manual updates only. And the reason I do that is so that I can just go and check the requests in the actual Revit collaborate part of the ribbon. So if I OK that, what I would do is instead of having all these little on screen requests coming up all the time, I go to collaborate and I just click on edit and request when I first start my project in the morning and I can check the requests that have come in. I can then grant or deny them, job done. Then I don't keep getting them popping up on the screen when I'm trying to work at the same time. 
Because what you'll find is a lot of BIM managers, a lot of CAD managers are also Revit users. They're not just managing the project, but they're also working on the project as well. So they will be a user in terms of Revit as well. So the last thing they want is their work being interrupted by loads of permission to edit requests. So that's what I always do. I always set it to the lowest frequency and just go in here, editing request and check my requests at the beginning of the day, go through, work through the ones I need to, job done. And then at the end of the day, I might check as well so that then when people come in in the morning, they obviously got all their requests either granted or denied. So that's how you give permission to edit work sets when you're working in work set related projects.